In our last video, we learned about the different parts of a neuron. In this video, I'm going to briefly cover how neurons fire. The process of a neuron firing involves a few different steps, so let's take a look at them one at a time. When a neuron isn't firing, it's just chilling out in what we call a resting state. In this state, the neuron has a stable electrical charge inside and outside its cell membrane. Things start to get interesting when the neuron is stimulated, and neurons are usually stimulated by another neuron. If that stimulus is powerful enough to pass a threshold, then the neuron will fire. This threshold is related to something called the all or none law. The all or none law states that once the threshold of excitation is reached, the neuron will fire at full strength. Or if it isn't reached, it won't fire at all. An easy way to think of this is by imagining the neuron as a toilet. Toilets do not flush halfway. It's either flushing completely or not at all. Same goes for neurons. Okay, so let's imagine the stimulus exceeds the threshold. Now the neuron is going to depolarize and trigger an action potential. Depolarization starts when there's a change in the electric electrical charge across the neuron's cell membrane. So what happens is positively charged ions, such as sodium ions, will rapidly enter the neuron through special channels in the cell membrane. If the depolarization reaches a certain threshold, it triggers an action potential and the neuron fires. An action potential is like a quick electrical impulse that travels along the neuron. It's basically like a wave of electricity. Once the action potential reaches the end of the neuron, which is called the axon terminal, it triggers the release of neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that carry that signal across the synapse which, if you remember, is that tiny gap between the axon terminal of one neuron and the dendrites of the next neuron. The neurotransmitters released from the previous neuron will bind to specific receptors on the dendrites of this new neuron. This binding process creates a new electrical charge in the receiving neuron, and then it initiates the same sequence of steps that I just described. Once the neurotransmitters have done their job, they'll return to the neuron that they came from in a process called reuptake. And then something called repolarization starts. After an action potential, the neuron needs to reset and prepare for another potential signal. Repolarization occurs when the positively charged ions that entered during depolarization are pushed out of the neuron, and other ions, like potassium ions, move back into the neuron. This process restores the electrical charge across the cell membrane to its resting state. Then after repolarization, there's a short refractory period during which the neuron can't fire another action potential. This period allows the neuron to regain its resting state, and it prevents continuous firing. Once again, the toilet analogy works here. After you flush, you gotta wait a little bit. Okay, that's a quick overview of the steps involved in neural firing. In the next video, we'll take a look at neurotransmitters and their effects.